Welcome to TRP, everybody. Scott here today. Uh, my guests are from an awesome new group uh, coming um, from Toronto uh, called One for the Birds. Um, also a little bit of another tie-in as well that we'll get to. Um, but uh, we're joined here by Miles Gibbons. Where are you, Miles? There you are. What's up? What's up? Jared Ross and, J and Peter James Fox from One for the Birds. Um, I say One for the Birds, but uh, the unique thing is that you guys are actually uh, in two different bands, really. Um, not only are you writing and recording your own original music uh, called One for the Birds, uh, but you're also uh, performing in a, a cover band um, called UK Calling, which, by the way, I think is fantastic. I went through a, uh, a little bit of a YouTube rabbit hole last night myself, um, going through all that stuff, and right up my alley, obviously, being an old dude, uh, the 80s was my time. So that was fantastic, some of the stuff that you guys do. Um, I want to talk about both projects, but I'm going to start with the uh, UK Calling. Um, as I said, I've seen a ton of cover bands in my time. Never anybody that does that style and that genre as well as you guys. Um, it's New Wave, it's British New Wave ska stuff. Um, is that what you guys were listening to as kids? Is that what you guys grew up on? That was a big part of it. I mean, like I've been a big police head my whole life. And like I was I in high school, I played in a ska band and, you know, I've, I like all eras of ska, but got pretty deep into the two-tone stuff. And like with Jared and Peter finding out that those guys weren't to ska too. It's almost like you sort of have this guilty pleasure and you're, you don't tell people about it, but then you're like, oh wait, you like, you like ska too? Okay, we could talk about ska together, you know? So the, uh, like, and the new wave stuff, you know, Peter Gabriel was huge for me when I was a kid. So a lot of that music was, yeah. That's, um, the, the ska stuff that I remember growing up was nothing but obviously English beat and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, specials and things like that, um, which I heard you guys do. Absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see it live. Um, when you guys are performing other people's music and kind of putting yourself on the line, right? You're, you're kind of being in a cover band, you're, you're setting yourself up for people judging it, right? Yeah. Um, the thing is, with, we, we've all been in a lot of different projects over the years, right? And we've been, I've been personally very fortunate to like the music I play in, in most of them, I'll say. But I really wanted to be in a band where I loved the music. And I, I grew up in Dublin, Ireland, so... A lot of the UK calling stuff that we do is second nature to me, right? I grew up listening to on the radio. I was always playing in the house. So when it came to covering the, the songs, it's just like, I just started singing them. I didn't even really have to learn them. You know what I mean? It just kind of came out, yeah. which is the most ideal thing in the world. If you're going to cover music, you want it to feel natural, right? You don't want to feel like you're, you know, dragging through it. Um, <laughs> I really enjoy it. It's so much fun. We like we were we're what, a year and a half, two years we've been doing that project. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we yeah, it's probably we'd be coming up to yeah, it's two or three years. I guess we lost a year in twenty twenty eight. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. hard there's to a, count. Totally. There's a there's a funny thing actually that ties into that about the whole judgment thing. Like the way, like in my opinion, the way that you should experience UK calling or really any band is like go out and watch them play. You know, be in the environment grab a beer, be there with your buds, get on the dance floor if that's your thing, whatever. But we've, you know, we've spent the last year and a half putting out videos, you know, like making videos, playing songs. And it's sort of like a weird way to, to like absorb the style of music. So it's almost like we're opening ourselves up to like, like you were saying, like a different kind of judgment. I posted one of our videos on Reddit and this guy's like, oh, you know, I think you're playing the song a little fast and maybe, you know, like the guitar tone is a little this and maybe if the bass player was using his fingers instead of a pick and like, you know, I don't know if that hi-hat sound is right. And I was like, okay, fair enough, man. Like, you know, maybe you're right, but also like, that's not what we're doing. Like, we just want to have fun. Uh, we want to play music that we love and we want to, you know, we're presenting the energy and the vibe and the feeling of it. You know, it's not necessarily about playing it note for note. It's just about the spirit of it. It is. Yeah. It is about creating like a, a live experience. Um, and yeah, we, in terms of the, the judgment piece, we, we do put a lot into the show and we are trying to create like a really great experience for the people that come to watch us, you know, and no two shows are going to be the same. It's not like every, you know, we, we don't play to very, you know, we don't play to tracks. Everything's live. There's a lot of improvisation. And so we do take a lot of risks. And, um, yeah, we, 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 we uh, really value 
those kind of uh, the X factor that goes into each individual show as well. How do you guys decide which songs you're going to do? Um, it's a mix between what is going to work for the room, just reading the crowd, what generally works for um, the people that come to see us, and someone's just decided to start a whippersnipper next door. So that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's a mix between what we what uh, what we know is going to work on the night, um, the songs that we want to play ourselves. Like you know, if we want to bust out a specials tune, you know, there's a good chance that maybe if we're doing an abstract specials tune, that um, um, only a, a small percentage of the crowd are going to absolutely know that song and love it. But the you know the few people that do really love it, they're like, yes. A couple other people might be like, I don't know this one, but this is kind of cool. I think the people dig it. So it's a mix of, it's trying to find the right balance of the cool, of the stuff that we want to play, the stuff that we know will work and get the dance floor packed and, you know, create that live experience. And, um, and also a mix of reading the room as it's happening. Yeah. Um, the, when was this decision made to, to start doing your own uh, original music together as well? Around mid to late March 2020 when <laughs> we had we had a nice real nice summer all all booked up for the UK calling we had a bunch of festivals coming up we had so much stuff to look forward to right so first you know announcement that stuff is getting cancelled out okay okay well we'll see what happens I mean let's give it a couple of weeks and as we all know that dragged on a little bit longer than that <laughs> um but around yeah late March early April we started doing the UK calling quarantine videos and we started thinking, well, if we can do this, what's to stop us writing music? You know what I mean? Like, I've I've written music over the years. I've got solo projects, and I've always put it. People ask me, well, when's the next stuff coming out? I'm, like, oh, I'm too busy, too busy gigging. I'm too busy doing this. And now there's no excuses anymore. Right? There's no like, I'm not too busy anymore. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> so Jared and I, you just kind of started talking about it. What would you be into doing this thing? Um. You know, let's see what happens. And we tried to do about an idea a day. And um, so I'd, I'd start an idea, chuck it over to him, and he'd finish it, and vice versa, until we got enough material for an album. Um, now we've got enough material probably for three um, <laughs> at, at this point, which is a nice place to be. But yeah, it was just came pretty easy, and we didn't want to question it. We didn't want to think about it too much. We just Jared was just saying we just kind of tried to share out an idea a day and. Let's just keep the ball rolling. And once that juice is flowing, I feel like, you know, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to write about um, in the world, and it still is, obviously. But it was just musically, it was just easy. It was just, we just came off playing a bunch of UK calling stuff. So we were pretty fresh. Our fingers were working nicely. And it, <laughs> we just took full advantage of the, of the free time. Yeah, it was, it was a really creative sort of uh, few months. Like it was, given the, the three of us who played a lot of so much music together, so many different styles. It was like the songs were just like falling out, you know, they were writing themselves. It was awesome. Why, um, why not just keep UK calling and then do your original stuff as well as the covers? Like, what, what why the separation in the two separate different bands? Oh, I, I've I've tried that before. I, I was in a band before that was an original band. And we thought, okay, maybe we can start playing functions and parties and weddings, and you know, we can make some money to sort of support the original stuff. Uh, it sort of dilutes uh, the message of both bands. Um, you know, like I'd have people contact me saying, oh, we want to have your band play our wedding. And it's like, well, that's, you know, okay, like that's what we want to do. But you sort of want to keep those avenues separate because they are sort of different things. Like it's different music for different reasons, different purposes, and just sort of like being able to compartmentalize things so that, okay, if you want to come hear our music, you go to one for the birds and you know you're going to hear original music you're going to hear you know stuff that that we've written um and you know if you just want to go out and party and have a good time and hear some 80s tunes you can see uk calling i just think it dilutes the message of both bands if you sort of consolidate it like that you definitely want to give each project its own identity did um with, with what i love about one for the birds is that it's the original stuff which is great um, but it still kind of melds in that that you still have that 80s sound and, and, and uh, you know, you can still hear the new wave and the sky influences, but also at the same time, a lot more modern rock influence as well. 
Um, was there ever a, a, a conscious thing to say, let's be as far away from UK calling as you can? Not at all. No, it was the, the project was just, there, there, there was no set idea or set image for it. The only, we had, we had two mantras uh, when we were writing the songs. One was just write music that we want to listen to. Like we weren't trying to write hits. We weren't trying to write what's cool. It's just stuff that we wanted to listen to. And um, yeah, and just kind of keep it simple, I guess. There's uh, one song on the album, and forgive me, I can't remember which one. I got my notes here. Uh, that almost reminds me of like Sublime uh, meets the specials, or, or sorry, uh, yeah, meets the specials. Um, it's got that sound to it. Um, there's another one that uh, to me, I'm hearing OMD, I'm hearing Joy Division, uh, but like with a modern sound to it. That's uh, Only Till Midnight, which is my favorite song on, on this. Um, cool. The, uh, when you're writing, can you, the influences during the creating of them, um, are you getting those influences from UK Calling while you're writing, or is it just, like I said, you're writing, you're, you're just writing new stuff? Well, the, the reason we started UK Calling was, like I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, we wanted to play music that we really wanted to play, right? Mm -hmm. And just so happens that it is music that I grew up with and I, I still listen to and I love. So I think it's naturally going to, we're going, I'm going to be taking some little little treats from here and there, right? And it's going to come out in, in it's you know, pretty straight up rock meets, yeah, like specials stuff. It's definitely some 80s vibes coming through and none of it was intentional. Um, we were just, whatever was sounding right to us, we just kind of went with it. And luckily, it, it's funny how it does kind of tie into UK calling nicely. If we ever like, we were talking about it, if we ever want to throw in an original song, we could, probably could during a UK calling gig Definitely. and people were like, oh, that's a cool song. Who, who, what band is that by, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, and it just, just so happens that stuff that we like and stuff we want to write. Uh, it's a perfect album for me to, to, to be on vinyl. I, I would love to listen to the one for, one for the birds thing on vinyl. It would just sound great, I think. Um, you guys are, are the, the original stuff is on, uh, where, where can people find it? What, what avenues can people find it on? I think uh, all streaming platforms. We're, we're on Spotify, um, iTunes, Apple, uh, Apple Music. Oh, yeah, no, Apple Music, whatever. Um, Amazon, uh, Bandcamp, if anybody actually, you know, wants to part with a couple of dollars to support the art, you can hit us up on Bandcamp, uh, oneforthebirds.bandcamp.com. Um, all, all streaming platforms. It's up on YouTube as well. If you want to check it out on YouTube, we're, we're happy for anyone to absorb it whatever way they like. Is there physical copies? I, I was just saying it, to me, it's a great thing to, to listen to on vinyl, I would think. Uh, is there plans to have that put on record? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, um, we're, in the, we're in the process of um, finishing, up, uh, finishing up the final touches. Um, so there, our goal is definitely to have some physical copies for available for anybody. And um, I just uh, I hope anyone that's listening might want to check us out and follow us on the social so they can stay up to date when um, anything is available. When, if and when, when it is. Yeah. The uh, you guys have been kept busy for the past year. We talked about the UK calling, doing the online performances. A lot of bands have been doing the online stuff. Um, you guys have done it really well. What's that process been like to be in different places and trying to record a song together for the YouTube thing? It, it's been, well, it's, it's, it's been pretty good. It, it hasn't been bad. It's what, I, what I've noticed about both projects is um, that the, the talent that, it, you know, that we have in the band is pretty, you know, where there's like recording drums is so hard and, if I'm putting together one of those videos, the drums that my Miles sends me are just like perfect. Like I don't have to touch them ever. Peter's vocals and guitars are perfect. So it's, it's in that regard, it's really easy for the videos to be compiled together. Um, obviously we'd rather be in a room playing together though, because that's where we get the energy and that's what kind of nourishes us as musicians. The first two or three we did for you Colin was like, you know, stuff from our set list and we're like, we should just be learning new songs. We should use this as like, let's learn some new tunes, record them, and then they'll be forever in our repertoire too. So the last bunch have been all stuff we've never played before live, and which we can't wait to bring into the stage and add those to the, the set list. It's been cool. Um, 
it's it hasn't been easy to not perform uh, in front of an audience. Uh, you're doing the online stuff. Are you when you guys get back out? What's the priority? Is it going to be to go out and have fun and do the UK calling stuff for a while, or is it going to be to try to push the one for the birds and, and, and get as many gigs as you can doing the original stuff? I feel like it it could and should, and I want it to be both. Mm -hmm. Um, and and sort of during normal operating procedures, I don't think that would be would be impossible. You know, uh, usually the you know, the original music thing is cool because in a city like Toronto, I mean hopefully there are still tons of venues. I mean, venues have closed. There have been venues that have changed hands and venues that have opened up. So, you know, there are opportunities to play. And the cool thing is original music, you can sort of play pretty much any night of the week. You know, the UK calling stuff, we're usually going to be playing on like a Friday or Saturday. So being able to sort of like play those gigs and just, you know, we, we've got a couple normal rooms that we play at that we play at sort of on a monthly basis when things are open, being able to sort of jump back into those gigs will be good. But I think we should, I think we should be doing both and I want to be doing both. Yeah. Um, will you ever stop doing UK calling? Do you think? I mean, I, I, I mentioned that only because Pursuit of Happiness is one of my favorite bands. I interviewed Mo Bird not that long ago, um, even throughout their entire success, like right through selling a ton of records and touring internationally and doing all that, they still, on weekends did, uh, I can't remember the name of the band, but they did corporate gigs where they were performing like 80s stuff like, I mean, we're talking like Karma Chameleon and, and Betty Davis Eyes and stuff like that. And, and anybody who showed up at these corporate Christmas parties and stuff would see Pursuit of Happiness doing all this stuff. And it was great for them because it was an outlet. Um, do you guys think that'll ever stop and you'll say, let's do this full time with what we got to concentrate on one for the birds? I like the sound of that. I like the sound. <laughs> I like the sound of keeping keeping both going. Um, we're we're just getting started with UK calling as well as one for the boards. Birds. Um, lots of ideas that we 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 want to take it to bigger stages. We want to. We've got lots of different tribute nights. Uh, we did a UK cure night before lockdown happened, and it was I saw some of that on YouTube. And it was so fun. good, so much fun to just focus on one of our favorite bands, and we, we have a bunch of those. We had a bunch of those lined up that we want to obviously do when we can. Um, yeah, we're going to bring um, a tribute to two tone, uh, the two tone label to the Jazz Fest that was lined up um, with a with a bigger band, bigger horn section. So yeah, we definitely want to keep uh, both projects running. We get a lot, we get so much, you know, enjoyment out of them both. So why not, you know? Yeah. The um, on your YouTube stuff that I saw, there, there seems to be a lot of guest musicians coming in. Um, is that just friends of yours that are coming in that want to be a part of things that you're calling and saying, we need a saxophone here, we need this here, we need that there? <laughs> um, the band the band has a saxophone player. So UK Calling is generally, we operate as a five or a six piece. Um, and yeah, the, so the sax is uh, definitely a big part of a lot of the arrangements. Um, so sometimes if there's a song that's just, you know, bass, guitar and synth or whatever, then maybe the sax isn't needed for that. So we won't hassle people. But um, yeah, we just, depending on what the song calls for, especially being able to, you know, get a little creative with the videos, whatever the song calls for, we can call one of our friends and, you know, we're really privileged to be able to be joined by so many great musicians. It's, it's unreal. Um, I'm sure you guys are itching to get back on the actual stage and perform. Um, I guess you're still at the mercy of the province. Uh, nothing's been, um, you know, really announced yet as to when things are going to open up. Have you guys made any plans uh, live wise yet? Have you talked to any venues? Are you ready to go? Or is it just you're waiting for things to open up and then you're going to start the planning stage? Pretty much in the in the waiting game, and um, we've tried this a couple of times throughout the last what, 14 months or so. We've got okay. Well, let's plan for two months away. Let's like book this stuff, and then we kind of end up back to ground zero again. So we're um, we're kind of waiting. But I was actually got some now that we're looking at some sort of opening in the next few weeks. I got a couple of emails today from the regular spots that we play at, like Miles said. Um, so we're we're looking at potential dates in maybe July or August. You never know. <laughs> I'm not trying to hold my breath too too hard, but I'm really hoping and cannot wait to get back in a room with these guys, let alone a stage. Um, yeah, want to make some noise and we want to see people dance again, for sure. We've been teased a lot in the last few weeks, so here's hoping, here's hoping it happens soon. Um, within the next, hopefully within the next two weeks. Um, is it generally the Toronto area that you guys are playing, or, or have you? Do you, do you go around? Do you tour around? 
Yeah, the bulk the bulk of the of the regular gigs are all in Toronto. We're Toronto based and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, we've traveled. We will travel. You know, that's kind of one of the things that I I like about music is it takes you to other cities, takes you out of the towns. Um, but yeah, the bulk of the regular spots are are in the GTA. Good, good. Yeah, we'll definitely be looking to take the show on the road. Probably, I guess, realistically now, twenty twenty three. You know. Um, We've been in touch with some uh, some theatres down across the border um, about, you know, potentially doing some shows down there and, you know, at, outside the province here in Canada. So that, that's definitely going to be um, uh, a big a, a goal for us as we push forward. Well, I have a feeling that uh, One for the Birds is something that we're going to be hearing down the road, uh, that a lot of people are going to be hearing that name. Um, as I said, I've, I went through the whole... UK calling thing last night and you guys are just fantastic. I can't wait to see you live. Um, thank you so much for joining us today uh, on the record player. Hope you guys can come back maybe another time when, when we are able to all be in the same room. I'd love to hear you guys play for us as well. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. We'd love that. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks a lot, guys. Miles, Jared and Peter from One for the Birds and UK Calling. Thanks for being on the record player. Take care, guys. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Thank you.